I present to all of you, gamers around the world, the Strong National Museum of Play! Their official video game hall of fame. This is all games and franchises that hit the fucking big time, that are household recognized names, games that have influenced and impacted the gaming landscape as we know it. Yeah, and they base us off of quite a few things, like games with longevity, games with actual icon status, you know, games with big time reach and influence, the world round, just tons of different things, and it's understandable. Right now, they have five games that have made the cut. They have quite a few other ones that didn't quite make it, but you already know, some point down the road, they'll totally end up being on there. And this list right here, they totally 100 fucking million percent deserve to be on there for their own reasons and i understand that there'll be plenty of people out there that want to go and argue based off of personal feelings and personal taste for it but you have to look at the bigger picture of are they actually as important to gaming as many people declare them to be and this isn't just about video game sales you know th this is about ones that really truly ended up becoming big time players whenever it came to gaming. World of Warcraft, Pac-Man, Pong, Tetris, Super Mario Brothers, Doom, these are all games that in one way or another within their specific genres on their specific platforms and just in general have been very influential and it's kind of undeniable when you look at something like for example Doom. Doom is one of the most important PC games, one of the most important first-person shooters out there. It helped pave the way for many other PC games to follow in its footsteps. And hell, we're even getting Doom 4 very soon. Look at something like Super Mario Brothers. Super Mario Brothers in general, and Mario in general, just icon status right there. But Super Mario Brothers was one of the main reasons that the NES and Nintendo in general became a powerhouse. You know. When, when Mario himself ends up becoming more recognized the world round than somebody such as Mickey Mouse, that should say something. You know, and we were just coming off of the video game crash, and then in comes in Super Mario Brothers. And, you know, most people had Super Mario Brothers slash Duck Hunt, and boom, there you go. If you were playing on your Game Boy or NES back in the day, every motherfucker had Tetris. Everybody knew about Tetris, and Tetris Forever, to me, will be the game that all moms can kick tons of ass at. But that that those games, totally worth putting into this list. And I've naturally made my own list, and while making it, I kept on thinking about, holy fuck. The, the amount of fanboy wars that could go on when talking about this kind of shit is insane. It's like, pucker your brow, eye, clench your ass cheeks, head towards the nearest fire exit and go into a bomb shelter. Fucking fanboy wars are going to be going off without a hitch like nobody's fucking business. And it's, it's to be expected, you know, lots of people will say, that game's overrated, that game isn't that fun, I don't fucking like that game. This game deserves to be on there for this and this reason. And I've conducted my research, and I thought long and hard, <laughs> that's what she said, about my list. And I think that many of the titles make sense for their own respective reasons, for, ch for well, I mean, ju just look at what they've done for gaming. You know, whenever you make the impact that many of these titles have, and whenever you change gaming just by being released, you know, when you create your own genres and sub-genres, whenever many other titles out there will pick up off of different traits that you would put in your games, uh, different styles, graphical approaches, uh, premises in general, you know, and then think about lasting appeal. Games with longevity that they still get played today, you know, and they're still revered and loved by many people, and that's why I think that not only do these games that they have already put onto that list deserve to be on there, but the games that I'm listing off, I think in their own rights deserve it. So, without further ado, Alpha Omega Sin's picks for the Video Game Hall of Fame are as follows. First up on Alpha Omega Sin's list is Gotta Catch Em All Pokemon Red and Blue, baby! Considering the fact that these games were the closest thing to a drug addiction that most Game Boy players could ever fucking have at the time, it's undeniable. Gotta catch them all fever fucking swept the nation, and the Pokemon games still sell like a motherfucker even right now. Hell, Pikachu is a household name. Everybody knows who the fuck Pikachu is, and everybody knows what Pokemon is. So, red and blue, that's where it started, and totally deserve to be on this list. 
Everyone is playing the living fuck out of Grand Theft Auto 5 Online right now. But you want to know where all the open world games really started from? Was Grand Theft Auto 3. I mean, GTA was already a big time series thanks to the three previous entries before that with Grand Theft Auto 1, 2, and London. But Grand Theft Auto 3 is where they cracked this bitch open. And it was without a doubt one of the biggest and best games at its time. And still is influencing games even today. So GTA 3 totally deserves a slot on there. If Super Mario Brothers deserves a spot on there and Mario himself deserves icon status, then his rival Sonic the motherfucking Hedgehog, the blue blur, totally deserves a spot on this list. Consider the fact that Sonic the Hedgehog is easily just as recognizable to everybody around the world and even made Sega and the Genesis slash Mega Drive a household name, Sonic the Hedgehog obviously should be on this list, no doubt in my mind at all. Call me Snake. Solid fucking Snake. No, not the porn star, but the star of the Metal Gear Solid franchise. Hell, Metal Gear was really big back in the day on the MSX, but once Metal Gear Solid came out on the PlayStation 1, Hideo Kojima pretty much struck gold. So did Konami at the time. And this influenced tons and tons of companies out there to want to go and invest in the stealth genre. As a matter of fact, for many people watching this right now, listening to it, Metal Gear Solid for them might have actually been their very first stealth game that they ever got to play. Metal Gear Solid franchise still sells really well to, even today and is still being released and it's all thanks to this title right here. Welcome back to the world of survival horror. Good luck, Resident Evil. The game that single-handedly introduced many people out there to the subgenre of survival horror. It's Resident Evil. You already know, as many people out there who have been subscribed to me, I love the Resident Evil franchise, and it's a very influential and important series in all of gaming, transcended gaming into pop culture, and I love it, and obviously I would throw Resident Evil on here without even thinking twice. Now, a game that got snubbed off of the list originally, but obviously we gotta have that on there at some point, and that's The Legend of Zelda. Now, most people could go and pick whatever their favorite Legend of Zelda is. It could be Ocarina of Time, it could be A Link to the Past, it could be the original Legend of Zelda, and I, any of those titles will be absolutely fine to pick, but the series in general deserves a slot. One of the greatest adventure series of all time, Link is one of the best characters of all time, and obviously Legend of Zelda, one of the crown jewels within the N Nintendo franchises, needs a spot on this list. How many PC gamers out there don't know about Half-Life? Hell, how many games ended up becoming full-blown franchises for Valve thanks to Half-Life? Gordon Freeman running around, crowbarring the living shit out of everything, taking down tons of alien monstrosities and just being the bad motherfucker that he is. Obviously, we gotta have Half-Life on there. The game was amazing then, still amazing now, and yes, we are still awaiting the unveiling of Half-Life 3, and once it happens, it'll be a joyous occasion, but for now, Half-Life, you totally get a spot on this list. But Alpha, what about the fighting game genre? Well, how about I give you a two-for-one deal? Street Fighter 2 and motherfucking Mortal Kombat. Considering that most two-dimensional games out there have used Street Fighter 2 as their molding for how they were gonna go and create a game. As a matter of fact, in many ways, Street Fighter 2 is the measuring stick for a lot of 2D fighters out there. The, you know, I'm a Guilty Gear man myself, but Guilty Gear wouldn't be what it is without Street Fighter 2. And speaking of, we have Mortal Kombat. If it wasn't for Mortal Kombat going and pushing the boundaries with all of the gore, blood, and violence, we wouldn't have the ESRB rating. As a matter of fact, for a lot of people out there around my age, that was the first time that you got to play a truly violent game. You had lines going around the entire fucking arcade of people waiting to go and bust out combos, do tons of fatality finishers, and it was an amazing time. Both of these arcade games are fucking awesome as shit, still played today, and are still getting releases even today, with Mortal Kombat 10 and the millionth fucking Street Fighter game. They're making Street Fighter 5, so we'll see how that goes, but for the time being, we'll have 50 more different Street Fighter 4s released. Either way, Street Fighter 2, Mortal Kombat, you totally get this list. Now, Super Mario Brothers did in fact make the list, but there was another entry within a long-running franchise that totally deserves to have an extra slot on there, and that is the very influential and groundbreaking Super Mario 64. 
There wasn't a shit ton of other 3D games out there, let alone 3D platforms, but when Super Mario 64 went out there, it was pretty much the title that you looked at as far as what you should do, what you shouldn't do, and hell, even today, most games out there want to look at that and try to relish in the same exact success that Super Mario 64 did, and it's one of the best titles on it, and I mean, it's Super Mario 64, what else needs to be said? How the fuck could we not mention something such as Tomb Raider? I mean, Lara Croft ended up becoming a household name and ended up becoming like the centerfold chick for most people to fat to. But way back in the day, if you were alive during a 32-bit era and you had a Saturn, PlayStation, or PC at the time, you were playing the living fuck out of this. It was Indiana Jones-style adventure with a chick with triangle tits. What's not loved about that? And Lara Croft is still starring in Tomb Raider games today. Most recent game went on to become a big-time success in really awesome game by the way but it all started back on the original tomb raider one of the coolest fucking franchises out there and i can't wait for the next one to come out and lastly on this list which i could include so many fucking games but i have to end it at some point i'm going to put metroid on there metroid ended up having its own style in terms of what we're going to recognize as metroidvania i mean Look at how many adventure games and action games have decided that they were going to go with a Metroid-style approach whenever it comes to going and going through catacombs and in tons of dungeons and stuff. Games are still being released that are influenced by Metroid, but not only that, but Samus herself ended up becoming one of the most important video game characters of all time whenever it was unveiled that was in fact not a guy that you're running around as, but one of the most kick-ass female video game characters, and one of the most kick-ass bounty hunters out there. One of the most awesome sci-fi games, and every single sequel from that point forward ended up pushing the boundaries even more with things like Metroid Fusion and Super Metroid and the Metroid Prime series. All of them fantastic titles, and we're totally going to put Metroid on this list. Now, before you forgot this, Alpha, you forgot this. I didn't fucking forget shit. There's just too many games to be able to list onto something like this because there are so many important franchises out there, so many important studios out there, so many important video game characters, so many individual titles that have changed the landscape of gaming. It's hard to even make this kind of a list, but I thought that these titles were important enough to take into consideration for something like this. I mean, the Strong National Museum of Play should honestly include these at some point down the road because, I mean, fuck it, why not? They really did end up impacting gaming in a big way. For many of you out there, you've probably played at least one of these franchises that have been named, or you fucking know about them at the least. You know, and I know many of you out there will have your titles that you want to go and include in it, so please, by all means, include all those titles down below in the comment box, or if you want to make a video talking about them all individually, fine, go and do that! Video responses, ahoy! So, anyhow, I want to go and make that video and make that list because I think they deserve it. You know what? By the way, uh, all those nominees aside, we should also include Leonardo DiCaprio, because he gets snubbed in all sorts of nominations. I think that's kind of depressing. That motherfucker deserves it. He's like one of the best goddamn actors out there. So there! Ha! Hmm. Fucking Oscar snobs. Fuck you. Anyway, so the Oscars can get double middle fingers, and this kind of video can get double thumbs up. Either way, this is Alpha Megasin, as always, nerds, nerds, and gamers. Game the fuck on.